Okay, there it is, Leah. Okay, we are ready. You good? So we are we are on the screen now. We are on YouTube. We are starting. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. We, yep. Sorry. So it, so, do we have a solution to this or no? We, we will have. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we are starting. Okay. Okay. Good. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with my colleague Leah Levaki, <laughs> and we have some people around here you'll, you'll see pretty soon. So welcome to our international release of Island to Exist and Resist. And uh, just for, to give a very quickly contest, um, I ask please my colleague in Brazil to put these slides. Uh, there you go, thank you. And uh, here we go. So I'm Professor Estela Bezerra. I work at the Federal University of Technology Paraná in the city of Curitiba, south of Brazil. I'm a professor there and I have my PhD in environmental engineering actually um, from the University of Guelph here where we are. And I'm also the head of the Department of Architecture and Urbanism. And Leah? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Leah Levac. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Political Science here at the University of Guelph. I'm also a Canada Research Chair in Critical Community Engagement and Public Policy. Uh, and had the pleasure of spending um, part of my research leave in 2019 in uh, Curitiba with, uh, with Professor Bezerra and uh, learning a little bit more about the, uh, about the uh, ILA project. Thank you, Leah. So the next slide, please. Quickly, this is the university where I teach in Brazil. Just one picture of the main entrance. It's a big university, lots of buildings, but just to show like in the map of Brazil, we are in the south, uh, in the state of Paraná. And this university, this university, sorry, UTFPR, it has 13 campuses all over the state. Uh, we have about 35,000 35, students uh, spread over about 100 programs, uh, both undergrad and grad programs. Uh, we are about 2,500 professors and about 1,000 administrative staff. So just, just a quick, quick, quick call. Uh, fact sheet on the university and then Leah. <laughs> oh boy. Um, and so the University of Guelph is in the traditional territory of the Atawandron and the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with, uh, with the geography of Canada, you might know of Toronto, uh, which is our biggest city and we're about one hour north and west uh, of the city of Toronto. Um, the University of Guelph has about 25,000 or so students, uh, about 800 faculty, uh, and I think around about 1,500 staff people, and any colleague in the room is free to correct me. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, was there other details? I think, I think yeah. assessing. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a good, I'm, I'm based in the political science department, but I am uh, help closely affiliated with an important unit at the university called the Community Engaged Scholarship Institute, where we focus on um, community engaged teaching, uh, learning and research, uh, which essentially is committed to building partnerships between uh, university and non-university uh, collaborators for the purpose of advancing uh, scholarship and learning. Thank you. So the next slide, please. This is just a very quick um, hands up on the pro this community engaged project. The title is Addressing Exclusion to Ensure Inclusion. And the main goal is to promote knowledge growth, exchange and transfer uh, to improve the solid waste management system in the city of Almirante Tamandaré, which is in the great Curitiba area, just, just besides Curitiba, but ensuring proper working conditions for the informal recyclers. And uh, this project has been going on since 2015. We have, um, including students, the staff, and so on, like lots of people involved. We have some results so far. We, we uh, prepared the map. So the time the students are learning and also providing uh, some sort of service to, to the city hall. Uh, so they did all the maps for actually the um, uh, solid waste management system for collecting the recyclables, uh, support for contracts, projects uh, related to the shed where the workers um, are, 
this film today, and it keeps going. We have a lot of activities involving students in architecture, communications, and a lot of uh, students from the university with, uh, please, the, the next slide. Uh, we have the partners. Uh, yeah, so from the university to us, like students, professors, staff from various departments, uh, we have two local associ associations of informal recyclers in the city of Almirante da Mandaré. One is Island, which is the title of the, 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 the film because it's about them, and the others to recycle and clean. Uh, we have two national big NGOs of uh, re related to informal um, recyclers, Elix and MNCR. Uh, we have one local NGO called Sefuria. Uh, their focus is on participatory methodology, so they're always around making the connections. And um, they were there before we started this project, actually. So um, it's very nice to be working with them. We have also partners from the District Attorney Office of Paraná State uh, and staff from the city of Almirante Mandaré. So a lot of people involved uh, in this. So the next one, please. And uh, just a quick note on the informal recyclers in Brazil, which considering comparing to Canada, like it's a different reality, completely different reality. We have in the country about 1 million, uh, and we say catadores in Portuguese for the informal recyclers. 70% of them are women. Uh, they promote sustainability big times in Brazil. About 90% of all recycling in Brazil only happens because these informal recyclers are picking these recyclables on the streets or trucks are sending to their sheds or so. Like, so they're responsible for 90% of all recycling in Brazil. Uh, however, there is a big lack of recognition by society, unfortunately. In fact, they are marginalized in many situations. And um, there is a strong national association completing 20 years now. Uh, it's the national movement of uh, waste pickers. Actually, I'm, um, I brought their flag here because I really like to make a point uh, of this big, strong movement here. Um, they, they are achieving lots of improvements. It's hard, but they're working hard. And, um, and also we have lack of proper partnership with government. Hopefully uh, with this new um, president we have, there's an expectation for improvements. He is already bringing some other projects, um, older projects back. And in fact, on the next slide, please, uh, we had this uh, on his inauguration, January 1st this year, uh, the, for, the current president, he uh, invited a lot of people from like the public sector, whatever, to, to, to walk through the ramp uh, with him. And on the next slide, uh, you will see that one of these persons was a lady, and she has this T-shirt with MNCR, this flag that I was showing here. And she was actually the one who actually gave the, the, the title for, for the president. So it was a very significant moment for, for the recyclers this year. So we are really uh, with high expectations for now. And uh, that's it. I think we have one more. Uh, slide. Uh, actually, the poster, <laughs> show poster, please. Uh, so, and then it's show time, right? We will just get the poster. So, it's an extension project we call in Brazil for Community Engaged, uh, addressing exclu exclusion to ensure inclusion. So, present island to exist and resist. So, it's a short documentary film about Island Recyclers Association in Almirante Mandaré. So in this poster, like it will probably be there, you can click on the hands and you can watch the film at any other time or the key QR code, QR, key, QR code. But also I'd like to say like, there are lots of boxes with hands in the poster because we have this um, documentary translated into, uh, uh, with, with caps in French, German, Spanish, um, Brazilian sign of language, um, Italian, so, and all based on the students who were volunteering, vol working as volunteers in the project. So we really want to tell this story all over the world. And uh, we have the producers, three students. One is actually right here, and like, he will show up later. <laughs> he, not, by coincidence, lives in Toronto, so he came to Guelph to be with us. And as executive produ producers would be myself and my colleague, Professor Carol, I, I think she's 
back there in Brazil now uh, because we were the coordinators of this, this project. So I think that's it. I don't know if anybody else would like to say something here, Leah, or no? I don't think so. I think you've covered it. So show time, please. Uh, let's watch the movie. So 14 minutes. Thank you. He said it will be at 10, 15 seconds. There we go. <laughs> Vocês ocuparam o, o barracão no Dia da Mulher. Isso, sim. Mulheres guerreiras vieram para cá <risos> e ocuparam o, o, o barracão para poder trabalhar, então, aqui. Por que o nome Ilha? Porque a Ilha já tinha lá embaixo, União da Ilha, que era um time de futebol, né? Uhum. Aí, e tem até hoje o time de futebol lá embaixo. Certo. Sim. Aí foi onde saiu a Associação da Ilha, né? uhum. Entendi. Então, aproveitando que lá na comunidade já tem já um time ilha, como nome é. Ilha. E uhum. por que, que é o nome Ilha lá na comunidade? Porque onde a gente mora é uma ilha. Porque o rio passa de um lado e do outro. Daí a gente fica no meio ali. Uhum. Então, você já, se, já é uma é, ilha. É, é, uma ilha. é, aí sempre quando dá água enchente, a gente fala que a gente ficava ilhado. Com a é, a gente não tinha como sair de casa, então a gente ficava ilhado. Eu já tomei banho no rio, eu já tomei banho no rio, ultimamente eu nunca usava no rio. Então, essa enchente que deu lá, a última, que deu forte, eu saí com a água por aqui. Nossa. Nós fomos tirados lá. Eu caí num bueiro com a perna, salvando as crianças. e Esses bags cheios, assim, ia rodando todos nós. Sofá, eu entrava por uma porta e para outra. Isso no tempo que vocês ainda separavam as árvores. Nós amarrava nas árvores, os bags, nós arrebentava, aí ergia cachorro. Nossa, nós viemos dormir aqui, gente. A enchente foi tão ou? forte que chegava a carregar a máquina de lavar. É porque a gente tinha feito a ocupação, então alguns dormiam aqui, uhum. alguns iam para casa. Uhum. Então, uhum. Nessa, nessa época que teve a enchente, a gente ainda não tinha trazido material para cá. Sim. Aí, então, como. Eu acho que tinha entrado difícil de ficar. Uhum. Tinha entrado, na minha casa mesmo tinha entrado água. Na, de todas aqui tinha entrado água, né? Então a gente resolveu subir e, e dormir aqui em cima. A gente ficou, aí a gente veio dormir aqui com as crianças. Uhum. Porque não tinha condições de ficar no bar. Aqui de Golê, Olê, Olê, Catador de norte a sul e de acolar. Nessa marcha sem parar. Caminhar é resistir, se unir é recitar. Então, vamos caminhando aqui pela Opa. comunidade Ilha, que é onde vocês moram, uhum. e contem para gente, então, na época que vocês saíram, então, é, daqui, né, e começaram a separar o lixo lá no barracão, o que, que o pessoal lá, os vizinhos de lá do barracão falam de vocês né, terem ido para lá? Alguns, alguns acharam bom, né, até ajudam também, levam material até a associação, mas a maioria, muitos não apoiam, né? Mas tem os que apoiam bastante a gente. Por que, que eles são contra, Liade? Ah, é porque eles falam que fica muito rejeito lá na frente, daí tem é, rato, por essas coisas. Uhum. Quem apoia vocês Sim, lá correndo? Vocês acham das pessoas mais, que eles falam? Achou, achou bom por causa que tinha muito prostituição, usuário de droga, né? Até morte já teve ali. Então, daí eles. Alguns apoiam por isso, né? Porque a maioria da turma passa de noite ali, daí agora como já tem um rapaz que cuida, daí ele se sente mais seguro, né? Tinha é muito assalto também de noite, que ficava lá, escondido lá dentro do galpão lá. Uhum. Daí por isso também, que muitos apoiam por causa disso, que daí como foi gente para lá, daí tinha iluminação, que daí tinha o caseiro, tinha iluminação lá pro lado de fora também. Só que uns acham, acham ruim mesmo mais por causa desse jeito, que fica para lá de fora, que a prefeitura não pega. Como que era o combinado? Assim? A prefeitura tinha dito que iria buscar esses rejeitos. Quantas vezes por semana? Na realidade, eles não deixaram combinado quantas vezes por semana. Eles só falavam que iam atirar os rejeitos, mas a gente tinha que ligar várias vezes para poder tirar. E eles vieram, tiraram, eles ficavam lá na frente, mas ainda tem rejeito que a gente deixa lá dentro. Uhum para não tirar para fora, para não ter reclamação dos vizinhos, né? É que a gente não tem apoio da prefeitura, sabe? É muito raro eles apoiar as coisas que a gente faz ali no barracão. A gente já faz várias reuniões, mas eles não, 
não tomam providência, sabe? A gente vive ali como Deus manda. A gente vai levando como pode. Porque eles não tomam providência e a gente está vivendo assim, né? Antes de ocuparem o barracão, os catadores faziam a separação na própria comunidade, mas foram autuados pelo Instituto Ambiental do Paraná e tiveram que procurar outro local para exercer a atividade. E disseram que não podia ficar trabalhando aqui, né? Porque a gente estava é, na beira do rio. Uhum. Aí eles falaram que a gente até podia trabalhar aqui se a gente fizesse um barracão adequado e tiver, tinha que ser pelo menos 10 metros longe do, do rio. Uhum. E eu não tinha um lugar aqui para fazer isso e nem recurso. Não, né, a gente não tinha nem recurso também uhum. para fazer. Daí foi onde a gente fez a ocupação lá no barracão. Também tem bastante gente que apoia, então a gente vai pela maioria, né? Então a gente não vai pelo que os outros pensam, a gente vai pela cabeça da gente e dando apoio para as pessoas que apoiam a gente, né? Até para essas pessoas que não apoiam a gente, né? Porque a gente acaba reciclando os lixos deles. Por mais que eles não queiram, a gente acaba reciclando os lixos, né? Como é que é? Acaba, por final das contas, a gente acaba limpando a sujeira deles, né? E eles não valorizam, né? Agora a gente está totalmente na dependência do caminhão mesmo, da coleta seletiva, que vem entregar ali para a gente. Quando chove, nós não trabalha, porque eles não trazem. Uhum. Eles é... ganham para isso, mas nós continuamos sem trabalhar. Porque... Mas até quando não chove, eles também não trazem. Pode estar um sol maravilhoso, eles também não trazem. Que daí eles falam que não tem muito material na rua, que daí eles vão juntando para trazer na... ou na quinta ou na sexta, quando eles vêm na sexta. Daí é complicado, porque daí a gente não tem como trabalhar. É lixo, lixo de, 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 de lixo mesmo. Não trazem reciclado, trazem lixo para a gente catar. Ah, então nem está separado. Nada, está tudo uhum. mesmo, levado até aquilo. Uhum. Está tudo misturado, é lixo de comida, é origênico. Tem até papel de hospital, é. por fim, né? Que eu cansei de ver também. Ah, barracão por dentro abandonado. Tu vê o pessoal, o povo lá trabalha abaixo de chuva, né? Continua quebrado aquelas telhas lá. Tudo pela minha. minha não, 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 não teve movimento, não teve, como que eu falo assim? É, adianta? Não teve uma melhora nenhuma. Não te, mesmo já. Aí o, o rapaz que está fazendo o documentário viu que tinha latinha? Eu tinha latinha. Faz dia que nós estávamos tudo aberto os sacos para nós. Já... Seis sacos de, de latinha. Não estava vindo latinha, não. Esse aqui você não abriu? Não. O que, que é isso aqui, ô? Oh? Tem bastante. Qual que é o nome disso aqui? É de um jogozinho de... De ar condicionado. Tem mais lata aqui, hein? Então os coletores chegavam aqui e jogavam esse material e os, com os sacos abertos vocês já estavam desconfiadas Justamente. que eles estavam abrindo e talvez tirando alguma coisa. Sim, até porque vinha bastante latinha na época, vinha bastante uhum. material bom. E parou de vir. Uhum. Foi sumindo, sumindo, a gente foi estranhando. Ué, mas por que, que não está vindo? Uhum. Aí a gente foi, a gente acabou estranhando e... E aí acabaram confirmando, uhum. realmente. E depois que vocês confirmaram esse desvio de material reciclável, é, vocês comunicaram a prefeitura? A prefeitura fez alguma coisa? Como é que está agora a situação? Melhorou? Foi comunicado a, a, pro, lá para a Secretaria do Meio Ambiente, né? Certo. Aí foi, daí a gente foi e comunicou. Na prefeitura também a gente foi mostrar a filmagem... Uhum. Mas daí acho que ali foi, teve uma repreensão ali, né? Que teve uma conversa com eles uhum. e foi mudando assim aos poucos. Sim. Mas no começo a gente não tinha visto muita mudança, mas depois foi dando resultado, né? Se pudesse falar alguma coisa assim, o que, que é o bom do trabalho lá? O que, que vocês mais Além gostam? De, de ser nosso dinheiro, vamos, vamos supor que é, uma, é um, uma coisa que deixa assim, que é um, é um lazer, né? Que deixa a gente mais calma, mais tranquila, né? Uma fisioterapia, sei lá, né? Como é que fala? Terapia da cabeça, né? Deixa a gente mais 
está dona, assim, nervosa, com estresse, você começa a mexer ali e você distrai. Né? É, o, ba o barracão entre si. A gente lá dentro, a gente só a família. Se a gente chega estressada, a gente começa a conversar e assim vai. Uma fala uma coisa, outra fala outra. E quando a gente menos espera, a gente já se animou, já deixou para trás os problemas. E sem contar que a gente é um trabalho da gente e a gente trabalha como pode, né? Então, não é registrado, é o, você faz seu horário. E sem contar que a gente ali é uma família. Eu gosto de estar lá no barracão. Para você, aliás, né? Ah, para mim também é um é um escape, né? Porque às vezes você está com tantos problemas que você chega lá, você vai reciclar, você esquece porque distrai a cabeça e fora que é uma renda que, que por mais que seja pouco, mas ajuda, né? Como se diz antes, o um pouco na mão do que nada. <risos> Além de ter uma renda extra, a gente aprende a trabalhar em conjunto, porque mesmo tendo as diferenças, a gente consegue fazer tudo unido. Quando a gente tem que lutar, a gente luta unido pelas, é, por mais material, pela, pela luta do barracão. É por isso que é gostoso trabalhar lá. E que mensagem que vocês gostariam de dar, ou algum recado para alguém? O que, que vocês gostariam de falar? É, assim? Lembre que nós existimos, né? Eu não ia conseguir Disseram que os meus sonhos Acabaram ali Quando os meus pés se quebraram Me zombaram Me criticaram Me levaram para a terra de Loreba e naquele lugar sozinho fiquei humilhado, desamparado. Mas no coração havia uma esperança, não se esquecer de mim. Eu sei que esse dia vai chegar e a carruagem do rei. Na cidade vou ver entrar pra me buscar. Eu vou me assentar na mesa do rei. Eu vou comer na mesa do rei. E todos que me humilharam vão me ver ali. E vão ter que saber que foi combinado assim. Mas é assim quando Deus promete. O tempo pode passar, mas de você não se esquece. All right. So, hope you enjoyed. And, uh, Lucas, I think it could be a nice way to put all the three streams now, like the audience uh, back there. Thank you. And our audience, this is wonderful. Thank you. All right. So first of all, I would like to send big thanks to the recyclers to start. And you. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was just gonna, Vinny, yes. Do you want oh, to Oh yeah, Vinny, if you and Ian, Ian is there. Our... Oopsie. What? Here? Is everybody in there? Is it pot like just sort of towards not us since we're already right there? Yeah. 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 Okay. Is, that, if, is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay. okay. So when I said a big thanks to the recyclers, actually, our friend here, Phil Out, he's a city councilor in Guelph. He started to clap 
and I think you're right. Let's clap for the discussion. And back home in Brazil as well, please clap, do claps for the recyclers there. Uh, they do huge work. Uh, our uh, sustainability relies on them a lot. So uh, I'd like to open the floor for questions. Um, I got one here from the chat, but let's say uh, we can start here. Like, is there anybody here that would like to make a question or a comment? Phil, please. Uh, so, question oh, comment. it has to be. Um, uh, Vinicius, could you get uh, the computer to feel? You can even unplug the socket because it's okay. Oh. Or, or he's here. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay, honey. He's here. Okay, thank you. Just a, a question and a comment. Uh, uh, I noticed that uh, all of the uh, the recyclers were women. Why are they women? Is it segregated work? Uh, I think Leah can also talk about it, but it is uh, seventy percent of recyclers are women. Um, so men, they, they like in this particular um, area in society, like economic, mm -hmm. economically speaking, speaking, they tend to work in construction and all, all other sorts of labor. And then the women tend to be like doing this kind of work. I don't know if Leah would like to comment on this as well. Like, uh, I mean, I don't think I don't think I would have anything to add except you know, to, to always be thinking about more general mm -hmm. global trends about work that gets erased and invisible within society and then who remains responsible um, for it. And I think that that story is a gendered story yeah. kind of globally. And just to juxtapose that, uh, in Canada, I would suggest that there is approaching equity and mm -hmm. that's important when it comes to issues of wages, pensions, healthcare benefits and other support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it goes along the same lines in Brazil as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we are, we are hoping for more equity in this, like one of the sustainable development goals, including, so we're really hoping to get more uh, and support for these women to like even more their conditions as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else in here? Any other comment? I will, uh, Get people in Brazil. I don't know if there is there any questions or comments there before I go to the chat. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So if you change your mind, just let us know. On the chat, uh, there was a question uh, from Dustin Brown. And uh, it's quite nice to know he's here on the chat because, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, Phil, it's Dustin. <laughs> he is, a, uh, I met him here when he was a grad student in Guelph. And big coincidence, actually, okay. Phil, Dustin Brown was there yeah. when we, were, we had that footage that we could confirm. It's a sad story, but the drivers who are public employees through the city they were collecting the recyclables and they were stopping the truck on the way. They were opening the bags and removing the aluminum cans because this is one of the most expensive recyclables. Like it, it's the one that gives them more money. Mm -hmm. So the drivers were actually stealing the aluminum cans from the informal recycle. So mm -hmm. the truck was, was arriving there without cans and that's when we noticed. And by coincidence, the day we were doing this footage, Dustin Brown was there. He was visiting the shed mm -hmm. with us because he had this opportunity. So it's that very nice to know you, you are here, you're still in this uh, connection. And his question, why is there no participation or support from the municipality? what barriers exist to their participation that's a very good call uh what happens this um it's a political problem so some politicians they care for population some don't period right so we have like we start like this in the city of almirante da mandare now uh from the last I would say a couple of years. When was the public audience, Vinicius? In 2019, June 2019. We had a big public audience, public hearing towards this. 
And from that moment, we got a couple of public employers that work at the city hall. And I will say their names. It's this lady, Olaja, Ana Clara, and Simone. And they really, really got involved with us. And they are like in a very nice partnership with us. So we, we are getting a little bit more support. However, however, like the mayor and the big authorities are still very slow and engaging. But with all this movement going on, uh, recently, actually, these uh, workers that work at Ilha, this, or, or sorry, Island, this association, they are finally being transferred to a proper shed. So with a lot of heights and the movement, so uh, the city hall uh, is building a shed for these, these workers to, to be in a decent place. And for the other association in Almiranta Mandaré, which is to recycle, to recycle, to clean and recycle, uh, they are also getting a better shed. So it's happening very slow, but luckily we are getting more support. And again, with like the, the federal system now in Brazil, um, they are already starting to provide funds for buying equipment, for buying you know, a personal uh, equipment, um, safety equipment. I forgot the name in English. Personal the, protective equipment. PP. Yeah. Personal protective. Pro equipment. Personal protective equipment, yeah. PPE. Anyway, so we are, we are leading towards a better moment. So let's see if we will be able to cover some of these barriers. Okay. Um, and there is another question on the chat, but if by any point here you have a question, just let me know. Or back home in, in Brazil, if you have a question, let me know, okay? Um, it, and it's Dustin. Uh, sorry if I missed this. What, to what extent is the University of Guelph and SESI involved in this project? And what and are there ways people can support locally? <laughs> uh, sure, I'll take that question. I mean, Dustin, I think... Um, the short answer is only indirectly. Um, so when Stella came to the University of Guelph on her research leave in 2017, 16, 16, 16, 16 to 17, 16, 17 um, she became quite involved with SESI, sort of learning more about the um, sort of some of our commitments and work in the kind of in the field of community engaged scholarship. And that was when I met Stella. So then I went, um, when I went to Brazil, uh, to Curitiba, uh, when I was on research leave in the fall of 2019, um, part of what I was doing while I was there was co-teaching a graduate class on um, popular education, critical pedagogy, and community engagement uh, in research. So we, you know, I would say that we have not been directly involved with this project beyond, beyond in very peripheral ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, reviewing some of the English subtitles, for instance, to sort of, um, <laughs> to, uh, to um, you know, uh, uh, up to uh, pr prepare them or, or suggest alternative wording. Um, more generally, though, I think there is, a, you know, a, a relationship between Sassy and the University of Guelph and Stella and uh, Utia Peari. Uh, and we think about how to advance community scholarship uh, together. I don't have a great answer to the question about how folks uh, can get involved uh, locally, although I am uh, certain that you could connect with Stella about that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just on, uh, along those lines that Leah was saying, back actually, Leah was there for um, this, uh, no, uh, June, July, December 2019. Yeah. And we were to start writing a project. We were going yeah. to apply for funds from the Canadian government. I can't recall the name of the uh, scholarship or the institute. We were going to start writing a project to work and, and the research question was about the barriers, but the barriers also for self-management inside the shed for improving the work, like 
the way the recyclers manage themselves. How could they work better together? However, COVID hit, and then we had to put a pause on that. And then the last couple of years, like we're still in the pandemics, getting out of the pandemics. And I'm here again, so it's just for a short time. So I I feel like we will yeah. proceed trying to write a project together. So making this connection is stronger because you know we we have like my I'm an alumni alumni here. Leah has been to Curitiba to the university where I teach. So we will we'll try to make it uh, uh, get more you know support and. To support uh, locally, I would say spread the word, you know, like help us to show this movie, like the short movie, talk about it, and then contact me. If like, We are not um, related to assistance, purely assistance. Like we, like what we do is we engage students to learn about this reality, to get involved while they're studying, like learn what you can do, like see the world the way it is, right? However, if some people want to donate something, things, whatever, like welcome as well, right? So you can um, contact me. I will ask, yes, please, the students in Brazil to put the, the email for the project in the chat so they can contact us later, right? Um, so, and there's another question here from the audience. So I will turn to you. Thank you. I have a comment and a question. I'm from Colombia, mm -hmm. and we have similar context there mm -hmm. with, with this like problem. And so thank you and congratulations for, for this work. And my question is, if, do you find any resistance in the community when you yes. were like starting the process? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes these communities are just tired of being like involved in projects that yeah. maybe mm -hmm. nothing happened. I'm yeah. glad that this is not the case, but mm -hmm. that's my question. Sorry, what's your name? Natalia. Natalia, are you from the University of Guelph? Or yes. yeah? Okay. Talk more. <laughs> Natalia, you brought a very important topic and, and like this is one of the reasons I actually <laughs> and I will show again uh got this here. <laughs> Wait a second, here. Uh, there was one, uh, when we were launch, launching this movie, like this uh, film uh, in Portuguese at UTFPR was uh, October last year. Then we had the informal recyclers there with us. They were invited, but it's very difficult for them to move around. So at that moment we managed to get rides and so on. And at the end, uh, one of the recyclers who belonged to this movement, she brought this flag and she gave to us as a symbol of since you arrived, you're you are sticking with us. Like you are not letting us go because a lot of scholars and, and sometimes even community, which, which is okay. Like you, you can do a volunteer work for short, short period, fair enough, but you are making a connection with these people, right? And I don't know, something is going on there, but I hope we are all good here. Yep, yeah. And uh, so she said, and since you started, you were like, you were always there. Like we are like, like fight one fight and go to the next one. So like we have now this, but they say that it doesn't happen. Uh, and, and sometimes when we invite them to go to the universe, they feel like, well, no, they will come here. They will ask us a lot of questions. They will get some knowledge. They will publish their papers and gone. Right. So, yes, there, there, there is resistance for sure. With this particular group, we are building like a, a relationship, but we still face um, resistance for sure. It, it's a matter of like being there, yeah. <laughs> like continuously. That's community engaged, like real. Right. So that's what I, we, we try to do with our group there. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's any. Yep. I'll turn to one of the produ the directors, actually, Vinicius. <laughs> yeah, it's not really a question, it's more of a comment of what this film and this community means to me. Because this was my first documentary. This was filmed six, five years ago when I used to live in Brazil. I'm born and raised in Curitiba, and I moved here four years ago. I moved to Toronto, so I went to school. And actually, this film is what got me into school. I used it to apply for film school. 
and I got in. Uh, Sorry, what's up? Yeah, in, in Toronto, Centennial <laughs> College in Toronto. Uh, and I already graduated, finished my program last year, and now I leave off doing documentaries, which is pretty amazing to you know look back and see the progress of this film and where it brought me. And more than that, where it meant in my life at the time. Uh, I co-directed it with Bruno and Guilherme. Bruno is to this day my best friend. He moved on to study film in Argentina. I came to Canada. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to look back and see what we brought uh, to my life. And so nice to see Stella here as well, <laughs> Miss Two, and uh, we met briefly in Brazil as well. So it's nice to reconnect. But yeah, just sharing my my portion of it and what what that means to my life now. Is. <laughs> Thank you, Vinicius. This was beautiful. And again, it goes back to what Natalia sort of said, like uh, the way we work in this project, like we actually build these connections and we don't let them go. <laughs> we just hold on there and we keep going. So yeah, he was a teenager when he started and uh, it, it goes along like community engaged also starts generating persons, right? So Bruno, this other director he mentioned is my nephew and he was just a starting community a programming communication. So, hey, let's do something while you are at the university, something, you know, like real, for real, right? So, and that's what I think it's about community engaged. So in, in the room back in Brazil, there are lots of students in the architecture and urbanism. Hi guys. <laughs> and uh, anyway, and then, but communications also. So it's nice how the impact on the students' lives as well while we're also hoping to make a positive impact into the informal recyclers, of course, right? Um, yeah. So there is another one in the chat. I don't know here if you wish, but, and there, there was, uh, Dustin, he mentioned something like, I'm glad Dustin is bringing very key points and we didn't make agreements before, right? So it's just him there. <laughs> um, okay. How does this work engage with the thought of Paulo Freire, right? And are there any formal or informal connections between this work and the movement uh, for the MST, with the no land movement in Brazil, people who are fighting for uh, land? Yes, uh, Dustin, uh, it's Paulo Freire, who is, is our patron in education in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time I actually talked about this project here, I remember Leah, she, she asked me, uh, is this pa Paulo? And she said, like, and I'm not a native English speaker, and I couldn't get. And then she repeated, she was Paulo Freire, Paulo Freire. Oh, yes, Paulo Freire. <laughs> and I remember, and actually, our friend Ian was there at, the, at that moment watching when uh, there was a, this very small group, and I was talking about the project. And so, yes, we are totally involved because participatory methodology is building on knowledge that comes from the group because that's where knowledge is, right? So it's not, it's also we need books, we need scholars, we need papers, but we need to build upon knowledge on what already is there. And then it's, it's the growth curve is unbelievable because we are talking about meaningful things. So yeah, we, 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 we go along those lines uh, in the participatory movement and uh, methodology and Paulo Freire for sure. I had the pleasure of attending one of his lectures in person before he passed away. And it, I, I, yeah, I treasured that moment. Like my husband and I were like in the theater, like listening to Paulo Freire. So it was, it was a very special moment. Anyway, and Dustin says, I was with Stella in Ilha Island in 2017 and worked with Ceci as a research shop intern, I think 2018. It's nice to have this chance connections with you both. So that's for us, Leah. Uh, let me know if I can get on board to help with any translation work or, or on your collaborations going forward. Oh yeah, very appreciated. For sure, we will, we will get something going from here. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, anybody else here, there? Um, I know the professor who is the coordinator of this, Professor Carol Amanda G, is on the chat as well. Uh, she couldn't be in the room at the same time because of her schedule at the university. So thank you, Carol, for being with us as well. We have another point here. No, it's just one last point. It's a sad point for me, uh, but a good point for Brazilians. Brazil beat Canada by three points <laughs> in the World Cup qualifiers for basketball. 
not a happy moment. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't win at all. Like, you might <laughs> okay. Anything else? Yeah, I'll oh, back to Vinicius here. Just going back to what we're talking about funding and getting funding from Canada, I, I think. Uh, so this was, again, filmed uh, in 2018, 2017. So there's a lot of updates. And I feel mm -hmm. like this movie deserves a continuation, better produced continuation with uh, my knowledge and Bruno's uh, after film school. So if we could get some Canadian funds, they will go a long way in Brazil. So maybe that's a way that we can uh, as well start working on getting funding, which they do give a lot for international projects as well, uh, to for me to go back to Brazil and film a second a continuation for the documentary. I think that yeah. I would be definitely happy for that. Maybe a longer format. That would be that would be amazing. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the other association, the the recyclers from uh, to recycle and clean, they say, oh, you're only doing. Making a movie about island. We also want one. said, we will make it. But then it was also the COVID thing. So, yeah, this could be the chance for uh, a documentary on the other association as well. And definitely, we are so looking forward to be able to show the new sheds. And hopefully, they working in better conditions. Because as you saw, it's a very, like, difficult place to work but that's what they have and they have to work in there right so hopefully we can you know keep going on and show improvements like real improvements and overcoming barriers so yes let's cheer for this yeah, a good excuse to go back to Brazil there we go and yeah. you'll be very welcome there back <laughs> okay um i think we have another seven minutes is there anything someone would like to to mention uh, we have here um just for to know some a colleague of mine from university. Uh, there she is. Let me see if I can show her. Yay! <laughs> and uh, she and I went to civil engineering together, and now she lives in Toronto. So she made the point of coming to Guelph with her two uh, kids, uh, which is very nice. And, and she said, well, the kids are now interested in things about Brazil because they live here for a long time. So I'm very happy you guys are here. Thank you. And also some colleagues, Leah invited and Phil and Ian and Denise. So this is the, the audience here. Thank you very much for making the point to be here in person. Uh, in Brazil, I know I have some students there and I don't know, um, we have these students. Who, okay, there we go. And we have these students who are under uh, internship at the back there. I'd like to show Adrinea if she could just wave hi. <laughs> And Ana Beatriz, hi. They are students in architecture and urban planning. I don't know, would you like to say your name and say a hi? And there is Gabriele as well to show. Okay, a little bit. Okay, so let's start with Adrinea, Ana Beatriz. Would you like to say a quick hi here? Hello. <laughs> okay, that was the quick hi. <laughs> And I really would like to send my, my like big thanks to these girls because they work hard in this project. Uh, Adrinea and Beatrice in the community engaged and Gabriela up front. Gabriela, if you, yeah, she she's uh, on an internship for a project that I am also coordinating, coordinating about internationalization. So, and this is part of this, this community engaged and internationalization all together in a sense, what we are doing now, right? So it's nice. And I see a lot of other students there, but these three uh, just would like to make this point because they to think of the internships as well. And uh, Lucas and Ian, if you could turn the screen to you as well, just to thank for the technical support and for making this happen. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, where are you? I see the computer. I don't see you. There we go. Hey, <laughs> thank you very much for the technical support. So Lucas is. Um, employee at the university and Ian is an internship as well. And I just would like to make a few points here. So uh, let me see if I forgot something. Nope, nope. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anybody in the chat, any other questions that my students would like to point because they are checking the chat there and let me know through WhatsApp here. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything. Let me see. Apparently, no. 
maybe so, I'll, yeah, yeah, maybe I would just jump in for a minute, uh, just because Stella has been doling out thanks to uh, everyone, but of course uh, she has been, I think, a real anchor. I don't think I know a real anchor um, in this work for many, many years now. So, um, in community, you know, in the world of community and critical community engaged scholarship, we often kind of grapple conceptually with um, how projects kind of come to be and how we maintain relationships and strike a, um, a, a good balance between, uh, you know, meaningful contributions to community partners while also producing knowledge um, that sort of advances uh, the field in this case related to sort of how we understand and think about um, the role and work of informal recycling, the ways that that um, is or is not recognized as a formal part of the economy, the ways in which that work is gendered and so on. And so, but you can't think about any of those things if you don't have really dedicated people who are willing to, um, you know, build and maintain those relationships. And so I think that's a huge uh, testament to you um, and your commitment, Stella. And uh, you know, and on a very personal note, of course, I never would have ended up in Curitiba in Brazil <laughs> on research leave if it wasn't for Stella. And so um, it is an enormously privileged position to be able to get to spend uh, time really um, learning about another country with the benefit of, uh, of local people who can sort of uh, expose you to their families and, and <laughs> friendships and uh, and so on. And the fact that, you know, you can run along the bus route and that's allowed. And I, you know, I love all of the things that you that you learn about a, about a place when you get to be there. So I'm really grateful um, for our friendship and I am really uh, honored to, to continue to um, learn about this work. Thank you. <laughs> I am in some senses trying to fill up time, but also uh, also pointing out to the architecture students the value of recyclable materials. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two things. First of all, the political economy of recycling is, is very challenging. The, the truth is that when you were talking about those the tin and the aluminum being stolen, mm -hmm. that's where the value in recycling is, and that's where the economy of recycling exists. So if that is stolen, it destroys the market. It just doesn't exist. Some things that we claim are recyclable are very difficult to assume any profit. But on the other side, for the uh, architecture students, I would encourage you to look at the, uh, at the experiments in Taos, New Mexico, with completely off the grid houses made from recyclable materials, oh, nice. including bottles that create uh, solar heat. And uh, it, it's really quite the, uh, the interesting experiment this architect actually mm -hmm. performed there and uh, is using nothing but cement and found objects. Nice, very nice. What is the name of the project? Um, just give me one. He, he will share with me the name yeah. of the project. Earth right? Ships, Earth Ships New Mexico. Earth Ships New Mexico, the guys. Sustainable cozy homes made with junk. Sustainable cozy homes made with junk. So make a point on this. Um, in our class, we will talk about it. We will discuss this. It's a little, a little, home, um, how to say, um, homework. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Phil. Uh, other than that, like in terms of the time, we reached our one hour event. Um, if there is any final words or comments you would like to know to do, let me see if my students say anything from the chat. I think no, apparently. You're good. Okay. So I think the only last piece I made my note is just um, please remember they do exist. So that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. Everybody here, there, and everywhere through the YouTube. <laughs> And uh, for everybody who made this happen, like this Vinicius for, you know, the move, the film, the students and, uh, and today for you guys, the audience and everybody who's involved. So thank you kindly. And thank you, Leah, for, for being such a nice partner here. Like it's been good to, to do some work and runs with you as well. <laughs>
All right, so okay. bye everybody. Bye bye, and I think we are good to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, this is.